Hi, I'm Brian Hopkins. Thank you for watching this presentation of research with my collaborator Aram Tongbun Duanjit from Mahidon University in Thailand. This is for the Fibonacci 20th meeting happening right now in Sarajevo. And fortunately for those of us who can't be there also on Zoom. I wish I were there. Sounds like a very fun time with dinners and drinks and all kinds of things and good fellowship. But I'm currently at the Park City Mathematics Institute in Utah and appreciate the organizers giving those of us who can't be there a chance to still participate. So what I'm talking about are a certain class of integer compositions. The composition is an ordered collection of positive integers with a fixed sum. So the compositions of three are listed there, three, two, one, one, two, and one, one, one. This is in contrast to partitions where the order does not matter or it's an unordered collection. There, two, one, and one, two would correspond to the same partition, but here they are distinct compositions. So in 2014, uh, Jörg Arndt talked about a type of composition where each odd index entry is greater than the next even index entry. So the 2i minus first part is always greater than the 2ith part. And if there's an odd number of parts, the condition is vacuously true for the last part. In the table here, I've listed the Arndt compositions for small values of n. So you see that in all of those between the first and second part, there's a descent. And there's one four-part partition down the last one of six. And you see there's a descent from the first to second and also from the third to fourth parts. Between the second and third part, anything can happen. It could be the same, could go up, go down, no restrictions there. So you see here by the count that the number of these for each value of n is a very beloved sequence amongst all of us here. So he added in the comment to the online encyclopedia integer, online encyclopedia of integer sequences entry for the Fibonacci numbers that these compositions are counted by the Fibonacci numbers. So I wrote to ask how he had proven that and what had happened with it. And he responded that he didn't recall how he had shown it and he can't, couldn't come up with it right then. So he had lost those notes and forgotten and it encouraged us if we found a proof to claim it. So before we get into any details, the moral of the story is when you prove something, post it somewhere, both for everyone else to appreciate and also for your future self to remember how it worked. So what we'll do in the rest of the talk is prove Arndt's observation two different ways, one by induction and the other by connecting his compositions to another well-known type of compositions. Then we'll generalize the restriction in two ways. First, we'll look at the compositions where the drop is steeper. The two i minus first part has to be greater than the two i part plus k for some positive value of k. We have two proofs about that. And then looking ahead to future work, we're going to see what happens when we have K as a negative value. In other words, we allow equality between the two parts or a slight increase from the first to the second, depending on this negative K value. And that leads to a generalization of what are known as Carlitz compositions, which I'll define in the last slide. And they're a well-known class of compositions amongst people who think about compositions. And all the proofs of what we've been doing are combinatorial. And I'll show you a few of those and just refer to some others. So here's the first proof of his result. I wanna show that the number of Arndt compositions of n is the nth Fibonacci number. And we'll do that by establishing a bijection between the union of the Arndt compositions of weight n minus one and weight n minus two with the Arndt compositions for n. Then since the table shows that the initial two values are both one matching the first two non-zero Fibonacci numbers, the result will follow by induction. So the bijection comes from the, these maps and we need to say what happens to the compositions of n minus one and what happens to the compositions of n minus two. 
And in each case, the details will vary by whether the existing composition we're starting from is, has even or odd length. So the idea for the compositions aren't compositions of n minus one is we're adding a one in the last possible odd place. If the composition has odd length, we're just increasing the last part by one. If it has even length, we're adding a new part one at the end. And that'll still be an art composition because whatever CT was being even, when I add a one there, that's into the next pair and it won't matter. For a composition from the art compositions of N minus two, we're going to add a one in some two spots at the end. It includes the last part if the composition has odd length or I increase the last two parts if the composition length is even. So this will all be clear with examples. So here we're looking at the compositions of, aren't compositions of six, you need the aren't compositions of five and how together with these maps, they match the aren't compositions of seven. So in the top row of the table are all the aren't compositions of six, and the bottom row is the aren't compositions of five, and then the columns divide those into even and odd length compositions. So starting from the compositions of six with odd length, we're increasing the last part by one. From even length, we're adding a one at the end. And you see that the image certainly is a composition of seven and preserves the quality of decreasing along each pair. If it's odd, changing this next entry won't matter at all. If I had an even length, adding a one goes into the next pair and that's fine. For the compositions of five, I need to add two net. So for odd length, I increase the last part by one and add a one after that because I'm increasing the last part by one and followed by a one that'll satisfy the decreasing part of the definition. And for the even length aren't compositions of five, I'll add one to the last two parts. And because they were decreasing before, when they go up by one, they're still increasing. And there's a reverse map based on the parity of the length of the composition and whether it ends in one or some larger number. And that all works out, just you have a bijection showing that the aren't compositions are counted by the Fibonacci numbers. So as a cute corollary to this, we have an unusual verification of the identity that the nth Fibonacci number equals the n minus second plus twice the n minus third plus the n minus fourth Fibonacci number. So the corollary has two parts. First, amongst the aren't compositions of n, there are f, the n minus first Fibonacci number of compositions that have odd length, and the n minus second Fibonacci number counts the compositions with even length. And that's directly from the proof as we described just now. Moreover, those aren't compositions of n, there are two times the n minus third Fibonacci number of them, whose last part is one, and then the n minus second plus the n minus fourth Fibonacci numbers of them that have last part two or more. And because we know that those are counted by the Fibonacci numbers, that gives us the identity at the top of the page. And this is really just tracing through how the um, proof we just discussed that and how that bijection works. So for the second point, if I wanna think about all the compositions that end in one, well, some of them came from the even length compositions of, a, of the n minus one aren't compositions. And some of them came from the odd length compositions for the uh, compositions of n minus two. And both of those are counted by the n minus third Fibonacci number by the first part of the corollary. And so that works out. So, to bring in the other proof, we need to review some Sanskrit prosody. I'm sure everyone's up on that. We're gonna look at a special subset of compositions where the parts are from the set one and two. So those compositions of four are two, 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 one, 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 two, one, 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 two, and four ones. 
And the number of such is the n minus first Fibonacci number. And the idea, if you haven't seen this before, is I'll just take the these compositions of n minus one and add a one at the end of those, and the compositions of n minus two and add a two to the end of those. And that gives me the set of these compositions of length n. There's no overlap there, it's invertible. And these actually come from ancient and medieval India, according to uh, Singh and Historia Mathematica, an article from 1985. And the reason they came up is these people were looking at ways of filling a line of verse with syllables that had long and short vowels. Short vowels had duration one, long vowels had duration two. And so if you're looking for the different ways you can fill in a line with a fixed length, you come up with these counts. And this is also what Art Benjamin and Jenny Quinn use a lot in their beautiful book, The Proofs That Really Count. This is analogous to tiling a one by n strip with squares and dominoes. And they make very good use of that combinatorial interpretation of the Fibonacci numbers. So here's the take home slide. Our second proof of Arndt's result uses those compositions that we just talked about. So to show that his compositions are counted by the nth Fibonacci numbers, we establish a bijection between his partitions of n and these compositions of n minus one just made from ones and twos. So the way to do this is to look at the bar graph representation of the composition. So in the example, six, two, four, three, three corresponds to a column of six boxes, two boxes, four boxes, three boxes, three boxes. If you're familiar with partitions, this is the Ferris diagram drawn in the French manner. If you don't know that, don't worry about it. But you can see how I'm writing the composition in this symbolic, in this visual way. What I'm gonna do then is break those columns into pairs. So on the right-hand side, you see those dark bars separating the pairs of columns. And now I'm gonna read them from top to bottom where each row within the two columns is either length one or two. And because of our constraint, we know that the first pair always has at least a single one there. So I'm going to remove that. And so you see that from six to four, three, three, I have from the first column, first pair of columns, one, 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 two, two. From the third and fourth parts of the original composition, I get one, two, two, two. And then from the fifth part of the original composition, I get one, one, one. So you see down there the composition of just ones and twos with weight 17 that corresponds to that aren't composition of 18. And that's sort of the proof of that words that shows this. And this is you know, the thing we we're most excited about in the works. Like there was this nice way of seeing it once you realize the connection between the Fibonacci numbers and the ones and twos. So now we can start generalizing his compositions. I went too far. So here we go. So for positive integer k, I'm going to look at these modified aren't compositions that depend on n and k. And we're changing the restriction to be to have a k included. So the n minus 2i minus first part has to be greater than the 2i part plus k for our positive integer k. So another way of thinking about this is these discrete pairwise drops have to be now of the, the descent of at least k plus one. And k equals zero gives us the aren't compositions we've been talking about. So the table here shows the number of aren't compositions of seven comma K for the small values of K. Zero, those are the 13 aren't compositions of seven. And then as K increases, you see that the drops from the first to second all increase. And we have, of course, as K increases, fewer of these compositions. So what we can show is that for 
a positive value of k and with n large enough, we have this recurrence that the number of a and k compositions is this four term recurrence, which goes back our purity far. It's the n minus first value plus the n minus second value minus the n minus third plus the n minus k minus three value. And we prove this by establishing a bijection. As usual, we move that negative term in the recurrence to the left-hand side as, so we can look at sets. So the bijection, which I will not detail for you, uh, shows that the union of a and k and a of n minus 3k is a bijection to the these generalized art and compositions of n minus 1, n minus 2, and n minus k minus 3. And I'll, I'll just say that the map depends on both the parity of the composition length like we've had before, and also whether the last part is less than k or greater than or equal to k. And we can also connect these to a subset of the compositions restricted to ones and twos. So we'll let C super K of one, two of N be the compositions of with parts one and two of N where each internal run of ones has length at least K plus one. So that means that at the beginning or the end, you can have a shorter run of ones, but in the middle, they have to all have this length. So another way of saying this is we're, we have a forbidden subsequence description. Well, I'm looking at the compositions that can't that do not include a two one two, a two one one two, up to a two k ones and a two. And like we've seen before, if I put in k equals zero, I get the compositions we were talking about, just ones and twos, no restrictions. So the number of the generalized aren't compositions of n and k is the number of these k parameter compositions with the n with ones and twos of n minus k minus one. And it's exactly the same proof as that proof of that words picture from a few slides ago. We know now that because of the sharper of the steeper descent that the one, two equivalent composition will have at least k plus one initial ones. I take those away and that gives me the weight on the right-hand side of the bijection. So now uh, moving a little bit in the head to farther than I wanted to, uh, moving ahead to some work that we're doing now, we can also look at these aren't compositions where the parameter K is negative. So what that means is that in the pairs, you could have, instead of a descent, they could be equal or they could go up a little bit. And we have a recurrence for those, A and K, is a of n minus 1k plus twice a of n minus 2k minus a of n minus 2 plus k comma k. And here, the combinatorial interpretation we've been using doesn't look as promising. So I've listed here a composition in a of 16 minus 2. And because the first column can be shorter than the second column by some amount, when I do the ones and twos, I can have ones in the left or ones in the right. So it's not clear exactly how what to do with those. And the other issue is that looking at the third pair of columns, since they can be equal, they that means I could have a whole bar, a whole stack of twos there. So it's not clear how I designate the, the one, two, two from the middle, separating from the two, two, two and the last part of that illustration. So either that interpretation needs to be tweaked or we just need to find a different interpretation to work with. Some of these have hits in the online encyclopedia of integer sequences. Um, a and one is also described by forbidden words there in an equivalent way. A of n two is curious. It's negative one times one of these rare OEIS entries that's all negative numbers. And it's described as an entry in powers of a certain matrix without any much reason why we care about that matrix. There are some interesting interpretations for the first values of K negative. For N equal, for K equals minus one, there's a hit with a description, with this description by Arndt. And it also corresponds to compositions with the parts just 
one or even numbers. So that's the bijection we're working on. For k equals minus two, it's the compositions of parts restricted to two and all the odds. So what we're looking at to generalize this is um, another set of compositions counted by Fibonacci numbers. This one's due to De Morgan from the 1800s. The compositions with only odd parts are counted by the Fibonacci numbers. So the last thing I'll show you is the connection to Carlet's compositions. Those are compositions where adjacent parts have to be distinct. And amongst the world of compositions, that's one of the more tricky things to, to um, study. It's more intricate than some other composition topics. However, if you restrict that um, inequality just to pairs, the first and second part can't be equal. Second and third could if they wanted to be. Third and fourth are not equal. Fifth and sixth are not equal. So those what I'll call pairwise Carlet's compositions are counted by uh, Trivenacci numbers. And then in terms of generalizing, what I'll do is think about writing the inequality as saying that the difference is greater than zero. So that shows how we can generalize that. I'll let R and K be the compositions where the difference in each pair is greater than K. And for those compositions, we have this recurrence. And if you're watching this, that means I may not be able to participate in questions and answers. So I'll just anticipate one. Instead of looking at pairs, we could do all this for looking at triples or four tuples or five tuples or anything. We've looked at that a little bit and it just doesn't seem as interesting. We're not hitting things in the OIAS. The recurrences have much higher degree in general. So we're working on these last two topics that I've mentioned, the K negative values, and then looking, compare these to Carlitz compositions. And if you do have other ideas or comments, please feel free to email me at the address at the bottom of all these slides, bhopkins at stpeters.edu. And I appreciate very much your time. Thanks.